What, what, what sense is it for me to be a millionaire and my kids to be broke? Right? What sense would it make for me to have a multi-million dollar company and my kid is homeless? What sense does it make? We've been talking about freedom, amen? So this is right in line. What sense does it make for us in this generation to be free and then our children still be bound by the same sin How many know the enemy thinks he has a right? I said the enemy thinks he has a right. Begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to pray in the spirit. I said begin to pray in the spirit. Out of your recreated spirit. We're about to deal with this right now. Come on. Come on. I just heard the Lord say, I said, the enemy thinks he has a right. And I just heard the Lord say, in most situations, he do. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. You know why? Because we haven't dealt with those enemies. And if my kids ain't free, that means I'm free-ish. I'm not all the way set free. My kids will not have to deal with the PTSS, post-traumatic sin syndrome. I don't want that enemy that I defeated to come back two generations later because it thinks it has a right. Is it okay to get real today? Huh? Say this with me. Say, I see you. I see you. I do not partner with you. Now, hold on now. Who are you talking to? Okay, wait, wait. You know what you've been dealing with. And you know what rises up every now and again in your family lineage. You know what that is. For some of you, it may be sexual molestation. Can we get, is, is it okay to be real today? See, it's time for us to stop playing games. Sexual molestation. Physical abuse. Anger. Lies. I don't know. Whatever it is. Sickness. Fear. Anxiety. Some families are wrought with fear. The mama's got anxiety. The kids got anxiety. Everybody got paranoia. Depression. We have someone in our family that, that their entire family deals with this schizophrenia, anxiety, depression. And it jumps around in the family. Does anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? See, we've been learning about being free and we want to be all the way free. Amen. So when, I, when we say that, I see you, I want you to get that thing in your mind, that enemy that constantly bombards your family, bombards you, the enemy that you had to defeat, that you see manifesting in your child right now. Now say it again. Say, I see you. I do not partner with you. And I command you to go back from which you came. Say it again. Say, I see you. I see you. I see what you're doing. I do not partner with you. And I command you to get your hands off of my children. You will not continue to run and wreak havoc in my family line. The buck stops here in Jesus' name. Now come on, lift up a praise. Begin to pray in the spirit one more time. Pray in the spirit one more time. Thank you, Lord. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No more. No more. Confusion of identity. No more. No more. No more depression. No more. 
No more anxiety. No more fear. Let's, let's, let's take our seats or let's try. And we're going to get in the word a little bit. Amen. I'd like to kind of take this time and try to finish up today so we can go on to the next core value. Amen. How many know what our core values are, are here at Redeeming Word? Nobody? How many know what they are? How many understand the core values of Redeeming Word are also the core values of the kingdom of God? Amen. I know my voice is a little weird. Like, who was talking? Is that Pastor Lonnie or somebody else? Core value number one is what? Love. Core value number two is what? Honor. Praise God. Y'all do be listening. <laughs> Core value number three is what? Unity. Number four? Freedom. And last but not least is discipleship. Amen. This is what's important to the king. Amen. Kingdom. King's dominion. It's important to God, so it's got to be important to us. How many believe that? And we want to make sure at Redeeming Word that we are not erecting an edifice or, or doing anything or being a community of believers that are not directly aligned with the will of God. How many know we can all get together and have a clubhouse and have fun and we be a part of a country club and do all that, get together and slap five and, you know, get the goosebumps every once in a while and, and, and never make an effectual change in the earth realm? How many want to make a difference? I said, how many want to make a difference? How many want to do the will of God? Praise God. Come on, let's say it again. Ready? All of our core values. Number one is what? Love. Number two? Honor. Number three? Unity. Number four? Freedom. And number five? Discipleship. Okay, if you have not get an understanding of all of the other four that we've been dealing with, you need to go back and watch all of our broadcasts. Amen. Again, if you're watching us online, welcome to the Redeeming Word Live broadcast. If you go on YouTube, all of our messages are archived and you can watch them there. Amen. So we're right now in number four. We've been talking about freedom. Somebody say freedom. freedom. Say it again. Say freedom. freedom. What is freedom? Webster's definition. The quality or the state of being free. The absence of necessity. The absence of coercion. The absence of constraint. Or the constraint in choice or action. Freedom is liberation from slavery or restraint. Or from the power of another individual. Unrestricted use. The quality of being frank open and outspoken boldness of conception and execution and then freedom the last definition is your political right we live in America amen the home of the free and the home of the brave amen <clears throat> we've been learning in the past couple of weeks as it pertains to you know us as African Americans or maybe you are not African American amen but maybe you know one praise God amen <laughs> and the reality is we've been learning and we understand that unfortunately, and, and, and this is just an, an actual truth, it's just a fact, that as it pertains to African Americans and when we look at our counterparts, we have dealt with slavery for over 400 years. How many know what I'm talking about? And there are some residual effects of slavery that we see today in our communities. Now, I don't care where you're from. You could be from another country. I don't care where you're from. There was slavery in your country. And that slavery has a residual effect. It continues down to generation after generation after generation after generation. And we've been learning that there was a, a term called PTSS, post-traumatic slave syndrome. In other words, an individual, generations later, all the way now, you know, from 400 years of slavery, is still dealing with some of the effects of slavery. We see it in our communities. We see it even in our health. We talked about it, right? We still eating fat back. Still eating chitlins. Now, I'm not saying I got anything against chitlins. I don't want y'all to start cussing at me and calling me names and telling me you're going to another church. Eat your chitlins. 
but have an understanding where they come from. How many know that was something that they served slaves? Or maybe you didn't know that. I'm hyping you to something you ain't even know. Well, you know now. How many know that if we keep eating that way, as we continue to eat that way, we're going to have high blood pressure? I said, can we tell the truth? And the truth will what? Set us free. And the reality is, guess what? We have to change the way we eat if we don't want to see, watch this, these post-traumatic residual effects of slavery. Here's an individual, uh, 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 17 years old, and he's dealing with being obese and high blood pressure, and we're saying, oh, it's generational. It's passed down. It's in your family line. No, 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 no. That ain't in his family line. What's in his family line is the same recipes that came from Big Mama. That's what's in his family line. He need to stop eating. Me included. <laughs> so we see those residual effects. And of course, it's not what we came to talk about today, but what happens is that's the same thing in the body of Christ as it pertains to sin. How many was a slave to sin? How many was a slave to sin? Tell the truth and shame the devil. We thought we were our own masters, but the reality was we did exactly what sin told us to do. You were of your father, the devil. And his bidding, you did. How many have said, I'm not going to do that no more, or I'll never do that, but then you end up in the same exact place that you said you'd never go, you'd never do, and here you are doing it, and you're frequenting that place. I told you a couple weeks ago, I said, I would never take these type of pills, I would never do that, and guess what? Before I knew it, I was doing the same thing I said I would not do. Why? Because sin was in control of my life, and whatever sin told me to do, I did it. It was never enough. Whatever I did, I thought, well, that's, that's, that's way over here. Well, I need more. And whatever sin told me to do, I did. And now I've come to know Christ. How many are happy that you have Jesus in your heart? How many are saved, sanctified, and full with the Holy Spirit? But now what has happened is now that we've given our lives to Christ, we're still dealing with some of the residual effects of sin. It's lingering in there. And what we've been learning is that we have no obligation to the old me. How many people even say that? Man, I'm going to tell you what I used to do. Oh, you're looking at me like that. You better be happy I'm saved because what I used to do is. How many know what you used to do is not what God is calling you to do? So you need to completely separate yourself from the old you and receive the new you. If any man. Be in Christ. Wave at me if you're in Christ. That man or that woman is a new creation. Say this. Say, I'm new. Put your hand right in the middle of your chest. Come on, talk to yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Say, I am a new creation. Say, I am now the original intent of mankind. Ooh, we. Say it again. Say, I am. God's original intent for mankind. Give God a praise right there. My God. Thank you, Lord. We give our lives to Christ. We come into the church. And I, and I kind of want to deal with this today because we don't have that much time. And we'll deal with some other things later on. But I want to deal with this. We come out of the world and then we come into the church. We come out of one type of freedom, but because we're not used to being free, it's more comfortable to be bound up again. How many know that once you're free, now you can do what you want to do? I'm free. Look at somebody and say, I'm free. So I can do what I want to do. How many know that the word of God says that all things are lawful? In other words, you could do what you want, but everything ain't good for you. Look at somebody and say, it might be good to me, but that don't mean it's good for me. And so when we come to Christ, we realize I'm free. God has set me free. I'm no longer a slave to sin. And because you got too much freedom, you don't know what to do with it. And we talked about it when as it relates to freedom, 
freedom is uh, uh, gradual or, or it, 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 it begins to go from one level to another level. And so when we talk about the levels of freedom, I said three levels, right? The first level of freedom is that you're free from. And the second level of freedom is that you're free to do. And the third level of freedom is that you're free to be. And so we've graduated and we understand that we're free from sin. We understand the grace of God. And that if I fall, that I don't have to stay there, that I can get up and all I got to do is ask God to forgive me. How many are happy for the grace of God? Okay, that's free from and that's free to do. But now it's time for us to walk into being free to be. It's time for you to manifest what God has originated you and created you to do in the earth realm. And so what we do is we leave one manner of slavery and we go into another manner of slavery because it is easier for me to come into churchdom, not the kingdom, churchdom. And when you come into churchdom, it is easier for me for someone to tell me what to do. Please tell me what to do. Was it 1863? What is Juneteenth? Is it 1865 or 1863? Somebody tell me. 1865. Well, in 1865, they set the slaves free. But how many know there were still slaves living on plantations because for them, in their minds, it was just easier to stay on the plantation because now that I'm free, I don't even know what to do. Where am I going to go? How should I act? I can't govern myself. And see, that's what happens when we come into the body of Christ sometimes. You know, we've given our life to Christ and now we want everybody. Tell me what to do. Pastor, tell me how to act. Tell me what I could. Should I go here? Should I not go there? And, and, I, and I'm not saying that it's everyone's you know, fault because the, the religion has created this, 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 this false reality and made us believe that God wants to control every single detail of your life. Or, or maybe God wants to control it, but it's more so that the church wants to control it. Christendom wants to control it. Other folk want to control what you do. I talked about it last week. You out to eat and they start playing music and you just don't even know what to do. Oh, Lord. Here they are playing that hippity hop. I better get out of here before I sin. But wait, you've already been set free from sin. How many know you could bust a move and still love Jesus? I said you could bust a move and still love Jesus. I don't have to be afraid of sin, but watch this. What's happening is I have to govern myself. How many know that self-control is a fruit of the Spirit? Oh, my God. So it's easier for me to be controlled by religion then it is for me to do the, the, I was going to say work, but it's more about doing the surrender of just being intimate with God. For you will know the truth, and the truth that you know will what? Set you free. The word know there is what? To be intimate koinonia, to have koinonia with, to have relational intimacy with. It's the truth that you are relationally intimate with that sets you free. Jesus said, I am the truth. And see, so when I'm relationally intimate with God, I don't care what they plan. I still got a relationship with Jesus. So I'm dancing with my wife and me, my wife, and Jesus is dancing. Oh, y'all ain't ready for that. Y'all ain't ready for that. See, some of y'all think God is always in a bad mood. I'm, I'm convinced that back in ancient Israel, right, when they started playing, I don't know what they used to play. Hava, Nagila, Hava. I don't know what they used to play. I bet Jesus was like. And they was like. Look at that whoremonger. Look at that wine bibber. Why? Because Jesus was chilling, man. Jesus was chilling. 
And we come into Christian and we come into the church and you get all bound up and you don't even know how to be free. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody today. Come on, say freedom. Oh, Jesus. Galatians 4 and 1. It says, think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance to his young children, those children are not much better than what? Slaves. A father has left an inheritance to his children. But the children, because they're young, they don't have a mature understanding. Those children are not much better than slaves. Now we're talking about slavery, right? Okay, let's look at it. You remember Big Mama back then? We talk about Big Mama, but you remember the slave owner would take Mammy and put her in the house and Mammy was to control the children. And so Mammy would tell the children what to do, but Mammy was really owned by the children. Are you hearing me? Are you trekking with me? Mammy was owned by the children, but the slave owner would tell Mammy, take care of my kids. And so Mammy would say, y'all wrench around here and do what I tell you to do and get over here and get over there. But what happened was them little slave, them little kids that that was the slave owner's children, the little slave kid, the the, the little slave, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) The slave owner's children begin to grow up. And when the slave owner's children grew up, they realized that they owned Mammy. So the slave had rule over the children. But when the children begin to mature, they begin to realize, wait a minute, Mammy, I own you. I can tell you what to do. You're a slave. I'm free. I ain't got to do nothing you tell me to do. As a matter of fact, if you don't shut up, I'm going to tell my daddy on you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is high time for the church to begin to understand that we are free. Yes, yeah, sir, Master. Yes, yeah, sir, Master. Maybe, maybe if I, I, I do what God telling me to do, he'll throw me a piece of fat back. Maybe if I, maybe if I, I do everything right, just everything right, I, I, I will have some place to live. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance, the father has died and he's left an inheritance. Say this with me. Say, I am a son or daughter, whatever you want. Say, I'm a son of the most high God. Say, as Jesus is, so am I. It's so funny because, see, you don't have a problem having an understanding that all things belong to Jesus. You believe that. You have no problem with that. But as it pertains to you, you see yourself on a different level. Well, that's why the word reminds you, as he is, so are you. Oh, my God. Come on, say it. Put your hand right there. Say, as he is, so am I. Where? In the earth realm. In this natural realm. Because you received Jesus and because of the sacrifice of Jesus in the three realms, the supernatural, the preternatural, and the natural, God reigns in the supernatural. The devil does not reign in the supernatural. He reigns or has power in the preternatural and in the natural. How many know you got to have a, a higher power to deal in a lower range? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So super deals in the preternatural and the natural. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The natural don't rule nothing. (laughs) If you're in the natural, you can't rule nothing. So what Jesus did is he came down into the natural. Oh, my God. And what he did was he ruled in the natural realm as a supernatural being, as a man. And then what he did was he seated us with him. He went up back into the supernatural realm and then he seated us in heavenly places with him. Why? So that we could rule and reign in all three realms. So when we say as he is, so am I. 
What that means is because Jesus is able to deal in all of those realms, the supernatural, the preternatural, and the natural, guess what? I have the same rights to rule in those same realms. Come on, say it again. As he is, so am I. That's why I can speak to sickness and it has to go. That's why you can cast out demons. That's why you can talk to your own mind. Forget it. Don't even get this far as dealing with demons. Just deal with yourself. Just speak to your own self. Start telling yourself, this natural body, you got to line up in Jesus' name. I am who God says I am. And I'll do what God says I can do. Praise God. Oh, this gets me excited. Calm down. Calm down. We're going to read this, Galatians 4 and 1. In a similar way, God has promised. Uh, let's read it in the New Living. I apologize. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his younger children, those children are not better off than slaves until they grow up. Look at somebody and say, grow up. Look at the person on the other side and say, grow up. That's all you need to do is grow up. Until they grow up, even though they actually own everything the father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age the father set. And that's the way it was with us. Before Christ came, we were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of the world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy our freedom. Somebody say freedom. freedom. Oh, man, this is, uh, this is what it's all about. Freedom. I just wish I could show you. What, I wish I had the ability to show you what freedom looked like. I think next week we're going to do that. We're going to have some, some dancers come up here and show you what freedom looks like. I wish I was a dancer. I just. Just show you what freedom looks like. Ask someone, the person next to you, when the last time you just danced? When the last time you just sang like nobody was watching you? I said, I want to be free. I, I don't want to. I don't want to come to church and have to be worried about what you think about my dancing. That don't make no sense. I don't want to have to come to the body of Christ, the community of believers. We all believe the same thing, right? The Bible says David danced his clothes off. I ain't gonna go that far, but huh? We should be all in here losing our mind, just going crazy. Why? Because of the goodness of God. <laughs> my Lord, sometimes I can't even contain myself. My wife be like, baby, 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 calm down, calm down, baby. Sweetheart, calm down, calm down. Come down, you got to preach, you got to preach. <laughs> oh, my Lord. God sent him, fifth verse, God sent him to buy our freedom. Those of us who were slaves to the law. So that we could, that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. Prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now, listen, this is to you. Now you are, are no longer slaves, but God's own child. Is Jesus a child of God? Wait a minute. Am I in? Is Jesus a child of God? Are you a child of God? Is Jesus a child of God? Are you a child of God? As he is, so are you in the earth. You are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, watch this. God has made you his heir. The Bible tells me that the, the cattle on the thousand hills belong to God. Yeah. Everything belongs to your daddy. 
Oh my, come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're going to stop right here. Come on, just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Listen, you are a child of God. I think that was the greatest revelation of my life. I have been, I have been through so many things. I had done so many things wrong. And I told you last week, if, if frustrate the grace of God was a person, <laughs> my face, my picture would have been right there. If it was possible, I would have frustrated it. How many know what I'm talking about? But as I begin to realize, if you remember, we started this journey all the way back a year and a half ago. We're talking about sonship. Understanding that we are sons. See, true freedom shows up when you realize that you're not doing this to, to, to please daddy. He's already pleased with you. That's why when I come up here, I fumble my words. I say stuff wrong. I look like a fool. I'm sweating like a pig. I don't care. Guess what? I'm a child of God. You may be like, yeah, you're right, but my daddy is pleased. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, See, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the level you got to get to, that you're free from the opinions of people and you're able to walk in the full manifestation of what daddy wants you to do. Oh, my God. See, that's what freedom is all about. Yeah, I can do whatever I want, but the reality is, is not everything is good for me. And not only is it not good for me, it might not be good for other people. And I realize that I don't belong to myself. I am not my own. I belong to God. And in belonging to God, my job is to do what my daddy wants me to do. See, I'm not just in this thing for myself. I'm an heir. God is a God of lineage. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he wants what he started to be passed down from generation to generation to generation. And the mandate he gave his disciples was to go make disciples of all nations. How do we do that? By living in the full manifestation of everything he said we could have. If we only stayed locked up in the four walls of the church... Only worrying about my four and no more. How are we going to tell somebody or show them what freedom looks like? You so bound up. Somebody look at you and like, I don't want to. Listen. I'm going to wait right till I'm on my deathbed and ask God to forgive me because I do not want to. I do not want to live in that bondage. I don't want to live in that bondage. What church you go to? My God, I make sure to stay all the way away from there. Never going there. What can y'all do? Nothing. Where can y'all go? Church and home? <laughs> Me and my wife going on a date. Where y'all going? Church. Okay. We haven't <laughs> we haven't a shut in. Ain't got nothing against shut ins, but how many know you need to have a shut in? You and your wife need to go shut in somewhere, huh? Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Come here. <laughs> she mad at me now. She's like, "Why are you calling me up here?" You, you need to learn how to have a good time. I said you need to learn how to have a good time. And you can do it with Jesus. You need to learn how to be free. Come on, lift your hands. Thank you, Father. Help us, Lord. Just help us. Help us. To... My God. Help us just to be normal way that you ordained us to be, the way you created us to be. Have a good time with you. Enjoy you. My God. That don't mean you got to lose, uh, uh, you know, 
the understanding of who you are, that we're spirit beings, that we're in this world and not of this world. I, I'm not saying lose that at all. But that's the whole key. You got to, you got to be in this world to, to, to show that you're not of this world. See, the world needs to see your freedom. I remember when I first met Pastor Tony. <laughs> I first met Pastor Tony, I was like, huh? He what? He's a pastor? Wait a minute now. <laughs> Why? He, look how he dressed. Look how he act. He, they the same age as the women. Now time out. You mean I can, I can be myself? Huh? Yeah. She telling me what to say because she don't want to say it. She ain't got no money. She said, how are you going to reach other people if what? If you always in church. Listen, go to church. I want you to go to church. But you have to understand that there's a whole big world out there. <laughs> I said, it's a whole big world out there. I was looking at my brother Rob. He just gets on a plane and goes to Central America. I'm like, wait a minute. You just going to go? <laughs> I'm going to buy a ticket and I'm going to go there. Well, wait. Are, are you going to? How many times did you go to church while you were there? One time. But guess what? He is the church. He went there and he's blessing the people of Central America. Then Apostle Yvette told him, hey, how can you stop in Panama and bless the people in Panama? Because I never got to go to Panama and minister to those people. He got in his plane, went to Panama and bless the people in Panama. He was sending pictures. He in the bush, loving on people. And when I mean bush, I mean in the wilderness. <laughs> he sent videos of just blessing people and loving on people. How many know it's time for us to get out the four walls? How many know that's what freedom looks like? I said, that's what freedom looks like. You only went to church once. You cannot be saved. Come on, if you want to be free. No, no. If you're going to walk in the full manifestation of your freedom, you already free. Come on, lift your hands. But we're going to be free to be. To be the heirs that God has called us to be. To walk in the full manifestation of our purpose and our calling. Listen, I free you up right now. I said, I free you up right now. Just forget about it. You're going to walk in some places that other people don't go. I want to let you know that what God has called you to, there's no blueprint. Oh, my God. There's no blueprint. What he's called you to do, you're going you're gonna to make the blueprint. And as you begin to make the blueprint, you're going to leave that blueprint for other people. And then they'll know. How to get there. You don't realize that some of you in here, you're pioneers. You're going to walk in areas that nobody has ever walked in. And that's what God is calling you to. But see, if you're not careful, you'll lock yourself in the Christendom. And you'll do everything that you see everybody do. Rather than walking in the full manifestation of what God called you to do. It's the truth that you know that sets you free. Being in koinonia with Holy Spirit, Him speaking to you. And whatever He tells you to do, that's the truth. Oh, come on. And when you walk in that, guess what? You're free. Thank you, Lord. Watch this. Free from lack. How many know as you manifest the purpose and the will of God, your provision begins to follow that purpose? And here you are. She like, forget you. I'm out of here. How many know? Now, sometimes we want to be free from certain situations and circumstances. We want to be free from lack. But guess what? You don't want to walk in purpose. God is like, what if I bless you now? You won't even. You ain't doing what I tell you to do now. And you want me to give you a million dollars so you can go do 
what you want to do with it? No, I'm holding that back, man. You start doing what I tell you to do, I'm going to shower you with blessings. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Come on, who want it? 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 Come on, just pray in the spirit. We're going home. Just for two minutes. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. I dare you. I was all over the place this morning, so you got to pray in the spirit to receive this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But you got it. You got it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. It's going to be so amazing. Entrepreneurs. Authors. Inventors. Artists. Singers. Songwriters. Movie producers. Woo, I just heard the Lord say this. I don't even talk like this. Financiers. Yeah, that was for you. That was for you. Because when I looked at you, the Lord said financier. I'm like, huh? Financiers. You're going to be the one that lend people money. Watch it, but you got to get free first. You got to walk in your freedom first. God, I remember I was, I was, I was, I was here at Redeeming Word. Many of you, maybe you don't know, I was working at Redeeming Word for 10 years before I went over to uh, Rochester to pastor, and I spent eight years in Rochester. While I was here at Redeeming Word, I was, an, I was the administrator. My wife was one administrator on one side, and I was the administrator on the other side. At, at that time, we had almost 3,000 members at Redeeming Word, and we had over 42 departments here at Redeeming Word. Somebody say, wow. 42 departments. I was one, you remember that? I was the one uh, administrator and she was the administrator on the other side. And so we had maybe six conferences a year, at least. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so these conferences, and I would be, you know, have to be, you know, dressed to the nines and dealing with things and dealing with all the pastors and, and seating all of the pastors and, and making sure that all the pastors were taken care of. And I was getting ready for another conference and, and I was all set up. And, you know, at dinner I had big old hoop earrings and I, I, took my little hoop, I took my hoop earrings out and laid them on the dresser and I got my three-piece suit on, my Steve Harvey. I mean, the little Steve Harvey with the little red... He laughed. He laughed. Oh, yeah, I had one. Steve Harvey suit down here. Clean. I had some baiters on. <laughs> they wasn't gators. They were baiters. They bait you in. You look at them and go, oh, no. <laughs> Not a gator. <laughs> Feet was hurt. And I'm looking in the mirror. I got like three suits, so I would just change up the ties, and you wouldn't know. I got one of my ties on. Got to tie it real fat so you can look like a pastor. In the mirror looking at myself, and I heard God say this to me. Who are you? I was too busy getting ready. I ain't had time to answer You know who I am. I'm your son. Yeah, 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 I know that. No, no. Who are you? I'm your son. He said, as clear as day, I ain't saved you. I said, you ain't saved me. Not this rendition of you. I said, what? I didn't save this rendition of you. I said, but, 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 but I've got to conform. I've got to do what you, I got, this is what you want. He said, no, no, I don't want that. Who told you I wanted that? He said, listen, I saved you. And I said, what? And he said it again. 
I save you. And then when he said, I saved you, I realized and I understood everything that God was meaning. That what he was saying was that there was people that I was going to reach by being who he created me to be. And if I dumb myself down to be what someone else want me to be, then I won't be called to the people that God has already ordained me to be called to. And that was the day I said, you know what? If I'm going to do this thing, God, I'm going to be free. How many have that same understanding? Come on, I just want to be free. I ain't the best businessman. I ain't the best orator. I don't know the Bible inside and out. I don't know every scripture in the Bible. I know some people that be like, you know, they'll ramble off scripture. I'll be like, hold on. But how many know that don't change the fact that you're called? It doesn't change your calling or your purpose. Come on, lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. Shh. Free to be who God called you to be.